Senator Graham is next. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Lynch, and congratulations on being chosen by the President. This is truly an honor, I'm sure. Uh, do you support the death penalty? Senator, I believe that the death penalty is an effective penalty. In fact, my office most recently was able to achieve How about a, yes? a death verdict there. Yes. So we have sought it, yes. Yeah, okay. That's good. Uh, well, that's good from my point of view. <laughs> I don't know about other people. Uh, sequestration. Have you had a chance to look at the impact sequestration will uh, create on your uh, ability to defend this nation as Attorney General, all those who work for you? Senator, with respect to sequestration, I have had an opportunity to review that matter very closely uh, through my work on the Attorney General's Advisory Committee and also as, you, as United States Attorney dealing with the budgetary limits um, that, that came down with the implementation of sequestration. Um, as you are familiar with the history perhaps far more than I, it did constrain the federal budget uh, greatly um, about, uh, about 18 months ago. Is this a ago. fair statement? If Congress continues to implement sequestration, it will devastate the Department of Justice's ability to effectively defend this country. Senator, I believe that that is not only a fair statement, but it is one that warrants serious discussion about how we manage budgets uh, in a responsible manner, which I know is important to this body, but also uh, giving us the tools that we need to protect the American people. In your time in this business, have you ever seen more threats to our country than are presented today? Certainly throughout, throughout my career as a prosecutor and U.S. attorney, we are seeing an increased number and probably the highest number of threats that I have seen, not just from terrorist activity, but the increased uh, activity in terms of cyber crime is one that is not only increased numerically, but, qua but uh, qualitatively in the type of threat that we face. So we need to up our game in the cybersecurity area fairly quickly. Do you agree with that? We do need to make sure we have the resources we need to keep up with cyber crimes and also to get ahead of these criminals in terms of detection, in terms of prevention, even before we get to the apprehension of these criminals. And there's just not criminals. Terrorists also are in the cyber business. Is that correct? Senator, you've outlined perhaps the greatest fear of any prosecutor is that the combination of a cyber attack uh, being carried out on behalf of a, a terrorist entity is one that uh, we take great pains to prevent, to detect, and to disrupt. But it is certainly an emerging threat and recalls for resources beyond just right. mere personnel, but in terms of our own technology also. Does it also cry out for Congress to take a comprehensive uh, uh, approach to our cyber problems and past legislation that would modernize our ability to deal with this threat? Certainly a comprehensive approach is necessary. In my experience, both in the Eastern District of New York and in talking to my colleagues, all of us are struck by the prevalence of cyber issues in every type of case that we prosecute now, much more so than even five or ten years ago. And so we must have not only a comprehensive approach, but one that allows government to work with private industry as well to come up with ways to best protect us against this threat. Could you give us an estimate, if not now in the future, what it would cost to deport 11 million people? Certainly, Senator, I, can, I, can, um, I wouldn't be able to give you that estimate right. now um, and would probably have to reach out to the Department of Homeland Security, who would be charged with that particular action, to see if they could provide that information to you. Okay. Do you have a role in the deportation of uh, people here illegally in the Department of Justice? Do you have any role at all there? Well, that role is initially, in terms of deportation, the role is initially handled by the Department of Homeland Security. There, is, uh, there are the immigration courts uh, through which individuals can seek either asylum or redress from deportation orders that are handled by the Department of Justice. But that would be um, simply actually further along in the process. But that's part of the process. Yes, it is. If you could maybe give us an estimate of what it would take to deport 11 million people from your lane call the Department of Justice and see what they say. I think it would be instructive to us to see what the bill actually would be. Uh, now, do you think the national NSA terrorist surveillance program is constitutional as it is today? I'm sorry? Do you think the NSA program, terrorist surveillance program that we have in effect today is constitutional? Senator, I believe that it's not only it's, it's constitutional and effective, I know that there are court challenges to it, and certainly we will abide by those court regulations. Right. Uh, but it has been a very effective tool in managing... But you're okay with it being constitutional from your viewpoint? 
certainly constitutional and effective. Thank you. Uh, marijuana. There are a lot of states legalizing marijuana for personal consumption. Is it a crime at the federal level to possess marijuana? Marijuana is still a criminal substance under federal law. Um, and it is still a crime um, not only to possess but to distribute under federal law. Under the doctrine of preemption, would the federal law preempt states who are trying to legalize the substance? Senator, I think you raised very important questions about the relation of the federal criminal system with the states um, and, their own, and their ability to regulate criminal law that they also have, because as there is concurrent jurisdiction, and in terms of matters in which citizens of various states have voted. With respect to the marijuana enforcement laws, it is still the policy of the administration and certainly would be my policy if confirmed as Attorney General to continue enforcing the marijuana laws, particularly with respect to the money laundering aspect of it, um, where, we, where we see uh, the evidence that marijuana, as I've noticed in cases in my own district, brings with it not only organized crime activity, but great levels of violence. Have you, do you know a Michelle uh, Lynn Hart the DEA administrator? I don't know if I said her name right. She's the administrator of the Drug Enforcement Administration. Have you ever had a discussion with her about her views of legalizing marijuana? Michelle and I have not had that discussion, although we have spoken on any number of other could, could issues. Could you maybe have that discussion and report back to me as to what the results were? Certainly, Senator. I look forward to speaking to not just Ms. Leonard, but with you on this issue. In August 29, 2013, I think uh, Deputy Attorney General James M. Cole advised all U.S. attorneys that enforcing marijuana laws against those that are in compliance with state marijuana laws would not be a priority of the DOJ. Did you get that memo? All U.S. attorneys <coughs> received that memo, I did, as did I. Do you think that is a good policy? I believe that the Deputy Attorney General's policy seeks to try and work with state systems that have chosen to take admittedly a different approach from the federal government with respect to marijuana and determine the most effective way to still pursue marijuana cases uh, consistent with the states and the choices that they have made. The Deputy Attorney General's policy, as both as I understood it and has been implemented, still requires federal prosecutors to seek prosecution of, of marijuana cases, particularly where we have situations where children are at, at risk, um, where marijuana is crossing state lines, particularly where you have marijuana being trafficked from a state that has chosen a legal framework into a state that has not chosen a legal framework and the attendant harms therein, as well as those who are driving under the influence of this. A great concern, certainly within the department and those of us who are looking at these issues, is the availability of the edible products um, and the risk of those falling into the hands of children and causing great harm there. <coughs> If a state is uh, intending to try to legalize uh, personal consumption at a small level of marijuana, what would your advice be to that state? Well, certainly I'm not sure that uh, if, a if a state were to reach out to the department for its views, um, and I don't know if that's happened or what advice has been given, but certainly I believe the department would have an obligation to inform them of the current federal status of narcotics laws and the department's position uh, that, that, um, that the federal narcotics laws will still be enforced um, by the Department of Justice. In 2006, you, you uh, signed an amicus brief supporting Planned Parenthood's uh, opposition to partial birth abortion ban. Is that correct? Yes, I was one of a number of former Department of Justice officials, although the amicus brief that we signed was focused on the issue of the uh, facial issues of the law and how it might impact the perception of law enforcement's discretion and independence. Okay. The only reason I mention that is that if there's a Republican president in the future and an Attorney General nominee takes an opposite view on an issue like abortion, I hope our friends on the other side will acknowledge it's okay to be an advocate for a cause as a lawyer. That doesn't disqualify you from serving. Uh, Same-sex marriage, the courts are wrestling with this issue right I'm sorry, now. I'm sorry, sorry. Same-sex marriage, there, this may go to the Supreme Court very soon. <clears throat> if the Supreme Court rules that same-sex uh, <coughs> marriage bans are unconstitutional, it violates the U.S. Constitution for a state try to limit marriage between a man and a woman. That's clearly the law of the land unless there's a constitutional amendment to change it. 
what legal rationale would be in play that would prohibit polygamy? What's the legal difference between a state, a, a ban on same-sex marriage being unconstitutional, but a ban on polygamy being constitutional? Could you try to articulate how one could be banned under the Constitution and the other not? Well, Senator, I have not uh, been involved in the argument or analysis of the cases that have gone before the Supreme Court. So, um, and I'm not comfortable undertaking legal analysis without having had the ability to undertake a review of the relevant facts and the precedent there. So I certainly would not be able to provide you with that analysis at this point in time, but I look forward to continuing the discussions with you.